The reason that they do these things is also the explanation of the medical uh, profession in the United States, and that is Satanism and occult practices. And here again, we go back to the ancient world, the Babylonians, when they built in Pergamos the great temple of Aesculapius, the largest healing center in the entire ancient world. And it was named after Aeus, the son of Apollo, who became the healer. But he healed not by God or through God or by purification, which is the ancient healing method of every people in the world, not merely the Indians or anyone else, but uh, purification, but to do it by artificial means, by what they call pharmakia. Now, what does pharmakia mean? You know, the pharmaceutical industry takes their name from that. Pharmakia means, in ancient Greek, means sorcery or witchcraft. And so this is the basis of the pharmaceutical industry in the United States. This is why they use chemicals uh, and drugs to induce uh, unnatural results in the human system. And, and um, so Aeus and his father, Apollo the sun god, each of them appeared on earth as a serpent. So what do we have as the emblem of the medical profession? You have the twine serpents, the caduceus, which is Aeus and Apollo, that is, at the occult. And it is salvation through the material flesh, not salvation through God. And it comes from the temple of the occult. So when you walk into a doctor's office or you walk into a hospital, then you're walking into a temple of the occult. And this is why uh, the Clinton administration uh, is dedicated to health care. Well, part of the reason is the mounting costs, because the Washington Post published a story last spring in which they stated that the established medical order, that is, the approved hospitals and the AMA physicians, had stolen in the last year $77 billion from Medicare. And they predicted that by 1995, they would be stealing $100 billion a year. Now, I'm not talking about quacks or naturopaths or chiropractors. I'm talking about the established medical system is one huge burglary ring, and they're doing it through the hospitals and the AMA. And that is why the AMA has their medical monopoly, and this is why the drug trust has their medical monopoly. This is why they operate for, through the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, which, by the way, was set up to protect you and me against uh, drugs which were poisonous or toxic. And there were a lot of those in use at the turn of the century. And the abuses were so widespread, they said, we've got to turn the government to help us. And so they set up the FDA. Well. Soon after they set it up, of course, the drug companies moved in and um, took it over. And uh, the New York Times published a story last year that the Food and Drug Administration does no testing. They simply accept the results which are sent in by the drug trust companies. And of course, the drug trust companies, when they send in their test results, they omit or they lose they forget to send all of the toxic side effects that destroy the liver and the heart and the brain and the kidneys. And so people start taking these drugs and then they, many of them are, uh, die very soon afterwards because of these toxic side effects, which the FDA has never seen. And uh, so then they begin a long process through the legal system to take these drugs off the market. And even after a drug, has been proven to have these fatal side effects, it takes them two to ten years to get it off the market. And then, if it can't be sold in the United States, they sell it to other countries. And the drug trust itself came about as a natural result of the Federal Reserve secret meeting at Jekyll Island in uh, 1910. And of course, the act was passed in 1913. And, uh, there again, John D. Rockefeller's son-in-law um, had uh, set up that whole meeting and run the whole thing so Paul Warburg could bring 
a Rothschild Central Bank to the United States. And the result of that meeting on Jekyll Island is you have a $4 trillion uh, national debt created out of nothing. And that, again, is occult. You say God can create something out of nothing, but uh, ordinary humans cannot do that. Only through satanic means can you create something out of nothing, through the use of the occult. So that's why we have an occult temple, and they have a temple, a marble temple, right there on Constitution Avenue in Washington, D.C. That is the headquarters of the Federal Reserve System, and it is a temple of the occult where they open their ledgers, and perhaps Baron Rothschild calls Alan Greenspan from London, and he says, uh, enter in your book $10 billion so that the American suckers will have to pay it. And Greenspan enters in the book, the ledger, the United States people now owe us $10 billion. And that's how we get the debt. That's where the debt came from. Created as bookkeeping ledger entries. So Clinton's great budget uh, reduction plan was a total farce because it never mentioned the Federal Reserve System. So how do you reduce the deficit when you've got people there in Washington in this marble temple of the occult who can write in, I don't care how much you reduce the deficit, you can reduce it down to nothing, then they're busily writing in $100 billion here, $100 billion there, and you write back it to $4 trillion. Doesn't matter whether you raise taxes, doesn't matter whether you reduce government employees, uh, because the Federal Reserve is still there, still doing its job. And, of course, this was never mentioned by anyone during the great congressional debate on the budget.